In this video, I'll show you how I paint Salamander Space Marines. Hello everyone, and welcome to another brushstroke painting guide. Well, this time I'm gonna take you through the steps I took for painting this Salamander Space Marine. Now, salamanders are one that I've been asked to paint for quite a while now, and I've been looking for the right figure, and which better figure than Adrax Agaton himself. But before we start, I just want to say a massive thank you for the response I got to my last video, and for everyone who's subscribed to my channel so far. It's really great to get your support, and it does motivate me to make more of these videos. If you haven't subscribed yet, then please do hit that button now, and don't forget to click the bell to be notified whenever I post a new video. Right, okay then, so let's make a start painting this salamander. Okay, so the first thing to notice is I'm going to be painting this marine in sub-assemblies. This might not necessarily be appropriate for the marines that you're painting, so if you'd like to know more details in terms of why I do this and how I prepare my miniatures for painting, then please check out this video above. Otherwise, we'll move on to adding some base colours. The first of which is going to be painting in the eyes with some Evil Sun Scarlet. I always like to start with painting the eyes first on a face and then using the skin tone to correct and tidy up any mistakes I might make. And the thing to notice here is the angle at which I'm using my brush. I'm coming in from the side of each eye and then to make it easier when painting the other side, I flip the head over and paint that upside down. Next, I'll paint in the base skin tone and this gives me a perfect chance to tidy up that mistake I've made just under the eye. And for this, I'm gonna use some Storm Vermin Fur. I've thinned the paint down with a touch of water to make it flow really smoothly from the brush. Whenever you're doing skin tones, you want the finish to be really smooth, so I recommend that you thin it down and add multiple layers to build up to a solid finish. Moving on to the armor now, and I'm going to paint in all of the joint parts of the armor. Uh, this is the knees, elbows, and of course the neck of the head. And for this, I'm going to use some Eschen Grey. As before, I've added a touch of water to help the paint flow smoothly, but this time I'm only going to apply a single thin coat because that will form a natural shadow in the recesses and grooves, but at the same time highlight on the raised areas without any extra effort. Now I'm going to paint in all of the green armor panels, and for this I'm going to use Warpstone Glow. So just as before, I've added a touch of water to help the paint go on really smoothly, but I found that the Warpstone Glow is actually a very thin paint. So if you are painting this over a darker primer, especially if it's black, then I definitely recommend that you use something like Warg Flesh first to build up to a green so that you don't have to put as many layers on to build this up to a solid color. As it is, I expect I'll have to use about two to maybe even three layers to get this to a smooth solid color. definitely worth taking your time at this stage to get your base colors on cleanly and smoothly but any mistakes you make then just go back and neaten back up again with the other color. Next I'm going to base coat it in a couple of details like the shoulder shield here and the right shoulder pad and for this I'm going to use some Abaddon Black. With the paint thinned with some water, I can just let that run into all of the recesses and then once it's fully dry, I'll apply a second coat to build to a solid colour. Now I'm going to paint in all of the gold trim details to the armor and the shoulder pad and for that I'm going to use Vallejo's Old Gold. Try and be patient whilst painting in the gold trim. It can be really frustrating but it is worth taking your time. If you do make any mistakes so then just neaten things back up again with some Warpstone Glow. Thank you. 
With the main armor colors now based in, I can add some of the details that are on top, starting with the tubes in Eschen Grey. Taking care again, painting next to the colours I've already painted just to keep things really clean and neat. But any mistakes again can just be corrected by painting over with the other colour. Moving on to some tubes on the face guard and the first one I'm going to paint in with some Mephiston Red. And for the second tube, I'm going to base that in some Abaddon Black. Now I'm going to paint in all of the bright silver details, such as the chain, this grill, the valve and the back of the flamer and some details on the face mask as well. And for this, I'm going to use Iron Hand Steel. Next, I'm going to paint in the loincloth. Now for this, I want to have a different tone to the black that I've already used on the armor. So I'm going to use flat black from scale 75, which would give a lovely matte finish. Now to base coat the weapons and I'm going to start off with the dark silver areas of the hammer which I'm going to use Iron Warriors. Next, I'll base coat the flamer casing with some Eschen Grey. And also this panel on the hammer. Next, we move on to the copper details on the flamer and hammer, and for this, I'm going to use Hashut Copper. As always, use a touch of water to thin your paint and apply this as thin layers to build to a solid color. Thank you. 
The weapons also have a couple of gold details I can paint in now and for this I'm going to use Vallejo Old Gold. And now to paint in the cool dragon heads on the armor, I'm going to base coat those with some flayed one flesh. And now for the axe handle, I'm going to base coat that in some corn red. Moving on now to the exciting part which is going to be the flame on top of the backpack. The backpack I've just base coated so far with Abaddon Black and Iron Hand Steel and for the flame I'm going to put a base coat now of Avalan Sunset. Just as before there's a touch of water here just to make it flow really smoothly and I'll have to apply several layers to build up to a solid colour. Okay, so this is the first time I've actually ever tried painting fire and the general principles I'm going to try and follow are that fire is brighter and more intense at its base and then gets darker and redder towards the tips until it turns to smoke. And the colour recipe I'm going to try and follow is the GW's heavy metal teams. Now I'm going to start to brighten the base of the flame and for this I'm going to start from a midpoint and then glaze down towards its base with some Yoriel Yellow. If you're not familiar with the technique of glazing what I've done is I've thinned the paint down so it has a watery milk like consistency and I'm just applying it very thinly so that it just tints the surface and I'm very deliberately painting it in the direction that I want to build the colour up in. So I'm starting at the midpoint and then always releasing each stroke towards the base, which is where most of the paint will be deposited. So through repeated applications of these layers, it allows you to build up a smooth transition. Now I'm going to do exactly the same thing, but in the other direction with some Fire Dragon Bright. So just as I did with the Uriel Yellow, I've thinned this down into a glaze, which means that it's actually translucent. So as you overlap, you can see some of the colour from underneath, and that is what allows you to build up your transitions. One really important thing to bear in mind when glazing is to always allow each layer to dry fully before applying the next one. A good way to speed this whole process up is to have an old hairdryer handy so that you can just dry each layer before moving on to the next. Now I'm going to make the base of my flame a little bit brighter still with some flash kits yellow. So I'm starting a little bit closer to the base of the flame for this one, again applying it as a glaze and building up a transition from this flash kits yellow through to the Uriel yellow and then into the orange. Just as I did with the first two colours, I'm applying multiple thin layers, allowing them to dry in between to build up the transition that I'm after. And now the same again in the other direction with some Troll Slayer Orange.
Back again now to the base of the flame and to make that brighter still, I'm going to glaze that with some Dawn Yellow. Switching direction again, and this time the next colour in the transition is going to be Evil Sun Scarlet. Okay, so my transition from yellow through orange to red is starting to build and the next color is gonna be Mephiston Red. Dark is still now on the tips with some corn red. Finally, at the point where the flame turns into a smoke, I'm going to glaze that with a 50-50 mix of Abaddon Black and corn red. Right, so my transition is looking quite nice from yellow through to dark red. And for the next bit, just so I can see what I'm doing, I'm going to paint in the cage with some Abaddon Black. Okay, so the next step now is to try and build up some depth to the flame. And as I said at the start, the idea is that the uh, flame is more intense and bright in the middle and at the bottom. And then at the raised areas, it's darker and redder. Uh, and we're going to do the same thing with this. So in the recesses, I'm going to make those brighter, more yellow. And on the raised edges, I'm going to make those darker and redder which of course is very much opposite to what we're used to doing, which is to make the recesses darker for shadows and the raised areas brighter for highlights. Okay, so after a lot of back and forth using the glaze colors on my palette, what I hope you can see is I've tried to brighten the recess areas with the brighter yellows and orange, and then all of the raised ridges I've darkened with orange and 
reds to try and give more 3D effect to the flame. Okay, so I think I'm going to call that flame done and move on to base coating the cage and the stand in some iron hand steel. Now I'm going to apply a shade wash to all of the green armor panels of Bale 10 Green. When applying the shade, move it around to make it settle into all the recesses and the areas you want to have the darkest shadow. Do be sure the wash is fully dry before moving on to the next stage. I recommend leaving about 30 to 40 minutes for this. Now I'm going to apply a wash to all of the silver and ash and grey details like the flamer, the hoses, the armour joints, the chain and the hammer with its handle. Not forgetting the silver on the backpack and in fact the skin on the head all of which I'm going to shade with some null oil. Again, just work the shade into all of the recesses and be sure to give it plenty of time to dry fully. Now I'll shade all the copper details with some Reichlin flesh shade. Next I'll shade the dragon heads and all of the golden details with some Seraphim Sepia. Thank you. 
Now I'm going to paint the inside of the cloak before attaching it to the model and I'm going to start by base coating it with some iron rack skin. Now I'm going to apply a shade to the inside of the cloak using a 50-50 mix of null oil and Lamia medium. So next I'm going to pick out some details on the face by adding some highlights of Storm Vermin Fur. As you can see, I've now assembled the head and cloak onto the model as those parts are ready. And I'm now going to base coat the outside of the cloak with some flat black from scale 75. With that bale tan wash on the armor, it's really darkened it down. So for the next step, I'm going to brighten it back up again using some watered down warpstone glow. The aim of this step really is just to clean the armor back up again and only leave the shade in the recesses and creases where we want the shadows to be. It's also a good opportunity to clean up any watermarks that might have been left from the wash. Next, I'll brighten up all of the gold details and the armor trim using some Liberator Gold. So you'll find that this paint is actually very subtle and doesn't give a dramatic effect when you paint it on, but what it actually does is it really lifts and brightens the armor and makes it more shiny. Just as I did with the green armor though, I'm only looking to paint this on the raised areas and I'm leaving the recesses darker from the shade.
Now I'm going to do exactly the same thing with all of the copper details and I'm going to brighten those up with some Rune Lord brass. So just as before with the Liberator Gold, the effect of this paint is quite subtle, but it does change its sheen and its tone quite a lot. And I'm just painting this on the raised areas and leaving the shade in all the recesses. Now I'm going to apply an edge highlight to all of the green armour with some moot green. So for this step I'm just working my way around the model, picking out all of the sharp areas of the armour which would be caught by the light the most. Try and take your time with this step and be as neat as possible, but if you do find you make any mistakes then just neaten those back up again with some warpstone glow. For the next step I'm going to apply an edge highlight to all of the gold, silver and copper details using some Stormhost Silver. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to painting the cape scales, and for this I'm going to use Corn Red. For this model I've opted to paint each scale individually, but for speed purposes you might decide it's easier to just dry brush this stage. And now I'm going to edge highlight each of the scales with some Wazdaka Red. Now I'll move on to brightening the dragon heads on the armour and for this I'm going to use Flayed One Flesh. So again all I'm doing is picking out the raised areas and all those recesses where the shade is settled I'm leaving so that they're darker. Okay. 
Okay, so the next step is painting in the cool dragon flames and I'm gonna start off by base coating them with some corn red. Now I'm going to brighten the flames with Evil Sun Scarlet. For the next step I'm going to paint the flames with Troll Slayer Orange but this time leaving some of the red showing at the top of the flame. For the next step, I'm going to paint the flames with Fire Bright Dragon, leaving the red and the orange from the previous step showing at the top of the flames. The next colour in my transition is going to be Flash Gits Yellow. Just as before, I'm going to leave the colours from the previous step showing at the top of the flame. And finally, I'm going to add a touch of Dawn Yellow to the base of each flame to finish the transition. Next, I'm going to apply an edge highlight to all the Eschen Grey details and the black backpack. And for this, I'm going to use Eschen Grey. Now I'm going to apply an edge highlight to the axe handle and for this I'm going to use Wazdaka Red. As a bit of a finishing touch to the torch cage, I'm going to add a thin glaze of Troll Slayer Orange to add a bit of glow to the areas closest to the flame. As a final detail, I'm going to paint in the purity seal, starting with the seal itself and basing it with corn red. Next, I'll base the parchment of the purity seal with Ushapti bone. Now I'm going to wash all of the purity seal with Agrax Earthshade.
For the next step, I'm going to highlight the purity seal with Wazdaka Red and Ushapti Bone. Finally now, I'm going to add some script to the parchment with some thinned down Eschen Grey. So now I'm just going to add a final edge highlight to the loincloth and for this I'm going to use Eclipse Grey from Scale 75. As a final finishing touch to the smoke on the flame, I'm going to apply a dry brushing of Skaven Blight Dinge using a soft makeup brush. So the reason I'm using a soft makeup brush rather than a normal dry brush is because it gives a less powdery and smoother finish. So with the miniature now added to its base, Adrax Agatone is complete. I really hope you've enjoyed watching this video and found it useful. If you have, then please do give it a like and maybe drop a comment below. If you'd like to see more of these videos, then please hit that subscribe button now and don't forget to click the notification bell to be told whenever I post a new video. But in the meantime, thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.